Ed, will you lead us in song? Yes, I will. Uh, <clears throat> but I am not going to sing the one up on the screen. Okay. And the reason I'm not going to sing that is because the Queen died a few hours ago. Many of us have some English blood in us. We have a very close relationship with England. We were a colony of England at one time. So I'm going to take the liberty to sing God Save the Queen. <clears throat> God save our gracious Queen. Long live our noble Queen. God save the Queen. <clears throat> Send her victorious, happy and glorious, long to reign over us. God save the Queen. Thank well you. done, Ed. Thank you, Ed. Uh, I think most of us, if not all of us, can't remember a time um, when Queen Elizabeth was not queen. So um, she lived a very long, productive life, and she will be missed by all of her constituents, and I think she will be missed by all of us throughout the world. Well put, Chris. Well put. Thank you. Do we have any guests today? Okay. Any visiting Rotarians? God is raising his hand, Chris. I'm, I'm sorry? Just a minute. God, Chris is raising his hand as a visitor, as a guest. Okay. Thank you, uh, Scott. We are looking forward to hearing from you shortly. And welcome. Thank you for having me. Glad to be here. Okay. Uh, we have some announcements. Steve Day. You're on mute, Steve. Okay, there we are. Um, as a British, descendant of British blood, which includes both uh, Wales and Scotland, we too lost our queen, not just the English. Um, let's see now. Okay, uh, I'm gonna share the screen. Can I do that? Here we go. Uh, here we go, click on that. I think I, you guys see that? Yes. Okay, cool. Okay, what I, I did is this is the email that went out this this Monday from District 520, 5280. It's a wonderful email, by the way, Look, wonderful newsletter, weekly newsletter. But one of the items was about the soul of Rotary which is the foundation celebration this year. It's gonna be on Sunday, November 20th. It's at the Nova Theater down at LA Live. And it's an afternoon um, event rather than a normal evening event. And it's a concert. I won't go through and read all of what, it's, uh, what it says here, but to, I really wanna focus in on two, well, maybe three areas related to the, to the, to the, um, to the event. One is, Tickets to the event, if you wish to attend. Second is silent auction items. And third is drawing tickets and what we need to do with drawing tickets. So if you go to this email you got on Monday, here it is. I, I think it came in around one o'clock for me. But if you go to it, you go to this section right here where it says drawing tickets instructions and you click on that and it comes to this page. This page can also be accessed through our Excuse me, LA Live. Right, so I was, so I was, I, I, I was thinking we're going to miss it, but now we're not realizing it's a Monday. Excuse me, it's a Sunday afternoon event. So they are looking for sponsors, and and before um, it, this talks about it, it looks like it's going to be a wonderful concert. It's going to be uh, focused a lot on jazz and reggae music. It should be wonderful, and uh, they um, the event itself is um, if, if you're a sponsor, there is a 
cocktail hour with food beforehand. Otherwise, there will be silent auction and live auction items. So if you have anything you want to donate, let me know, uh, followed by the concert. Um, but as far as if somebody wants to sponsor, you can read a little bit about the sponsoring, um, what that entails. The tickets themselves will be $75 and go on sale in a couple of days. And stay, stay tuned for the details. If I get something, I'll send it around. Um, the <laughs> opportunity tickets. This is the instructions on the opportunity tickets. Over the last few years, we've gone pretty much um, online for the tickets. So here is the instructions on how to go about purchasing, uh, drawing tickets. And I did it. I did it for myself this morning. And it's, it's very user-friendly. So they give you instructions right here. You visit the donate page on the RI website, just click on that. And then you just follow the instructions. And when you're done, you'll get a, you'll get a confirmation. I saved it as a PDF and then I put it into this Dropbox folder. This goes to Tori Hettinger at the district, all very, um, all very transparent, but also secure as it relates to our personal information. And it goes to Tori as to confirm that you made that hundred dollar contribution and again it's hundred dollars gets you 12 raffle books and if you want to do it through check then you can write a check to me uh, not to me but send it to me or hand it to me at the next meeting and make the check of, uh, to the Rotary Foundation and again it's a hundred dollar check and you can if you want just mail it to uh, Tori at the district office here or give it to your foundation chair which is me uh, but again I, I went through the process of which is basically what we've done in the last few years during COVID. And it worked very well using this, this, these instructions right here. And then to fill out the, the, the drawing tickets themselves, um, it's the same kind of a thing. You click on this and up pops these tickets. And this is what they look like this year. One thing I, I didn't like is when I started filling them out, it did not autofill. In the prior years, it actually autofilled, which was really nice. Here I had to I cut and paste, cut and paste, cut and paste. So I'm going to ask Tori if, what's going on with that. But right now, if you want to, when you fill them out, you have to fill them out either by typing it in or cut and paste. You know, here you write my name, Steve Day. Then I cut and I copied and paste, I should say, copy and pasted it here, there, all the way through this, these 12 tickets. And so I'm going to find out more about that. Um, so that's how you fill out the tickets. And again, You'll save that to the um, to the uh, Dropbox folder. But if you want, you can hand me the tickets and I'll send them into the district for you. So I did this year. They did give me 12 books. Here's the 12 books. I have 12 of these. So somebody just says, screw it, Steve. I'll give, a, give you a check of $100 to the Rotary Foundation. Just send them in for me. I'll do that for you. But they really would rather us use the virtual or the online ticket. So again, we've been one of the best clubs in the district as a percentage, the best club in the district when it comes to raising money for the foundation through ticket sales. So here is instructions. Um, they want us to make the payments by November 11th. So we got plenty of time. I will be on vacation for close to three weeks. So, um, but there will be people here at the house. So if you were to mail me the check, um, I guess what I can do is fill out the tickets for you. I might grumble a little bit, but at least we'll keep the process going because I won't be back at Rotary for a meeting until the first meeting of October or is it the second meeting of October? No, I think it's the first meeting, excuse me. Yeah, the first meeting. So, um, Anyway, I want to keep this process moving. So anyway, again, they want silent auction items and live auction items, but we'll I'll, I'll get, get you more details as they provide them to us or provide them to me. So again, please find that email from earlier <laughs> this week. Fill, uh, follow the instructions. They're very detailed. Or just go to the Rotary 5280 website, and you'll see a link that will take you to this exact page that we're looking at right here. And... Um, I guess that's it for now. I think I explained everything I wanted to explain. Um, yeah. Anyway, so once again, let's be the club in District 5280 that supports the Rotary Foundation the, the most through the purchase of raffle tickets. Um, All right. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. I think that's it, Chris. Thank you very much. Okay. Quick question for Steve. Yes. Uh, Steve, are you going to consider, since 
So going into the district, how you're going to do a list for Gandhi, either the matching points or the matching money? Yeah, I mean, what that will happen there is if I um, if people send them directly to the district, Tori will know, and she can I can say Tori, who sent it directly to you rather than through me, and she would provide me with that list. She would say these following Rotarians donated a hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, whatever. Um, thanks for the question, Mike, because I did listen one thought on my part. Some of our members have been very generous and and actually have donated larger amounts through their donor advised fund. I'm trying. Um, I'm also going to be calling Tori on that to understand how that process will work. I think I understand how that would work, but um, I just want to confirm with her because those those contributions are are not made directly to uh, the foundation by us. It's made through a charitable organization where we instruct the organization itself. In my case, it's Morgan Stanley to make a contribution to the Rotary Foundation. So uh, in the past, what I would do is I'd make a copy of that as well as the tickets and send it off to Tori. I have a feeling that's how we'll do it again this year, but I'll, I'll, I'm going to find out for those in our club who use that feature or function. So okay. any, guys, any other questions? All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, just as a point of information, I know I've mentioned it uh, before. Um, our former member, Bill Goodwin, was a past district governor, and he's the one that started the Paul Harris dinner. So um, when I was president 29 years ago, we sent 10 tables. And uh, the club is smaller now, but I certainly would encourage and would like to see as many people going to this event as possible. It's um, It supports um, and raises an enormous amount of money uh, for Rotary. In the past, it went to the Rotary scholars uh, that are going uh, from uh, different countries and coming into the United States and from our country going to outside countries. So please uh, put it on your list. Okay, uh, Tia, any other announcements? Okay, here we go. I, uh, before before you start, Taya, I uh, the U.S. Open is currently going on, and it's a two week tournament, and we have a changing of the guard. The Nadal's, the Djokovic, the Federer's, the Medvedev's, they're not going to compete for uh, the prize. Um, we have a whole new different generation of young people coming up. It's very exciting. And I don't know if any of you stayed up late last night and watched uh, Carlos Alvarez overcome uh, Sinner in five sets. I think it was close to three o'clock or 3.30 in the morning when it finished uh, Eastern Standard Time. It was an historic match. Sinner served at match point uh, in the fourth set and somehow uh, wasn't able to close it out. And it went to a fifth set. Um, just so you know, Carlos Alvarez is 19 years old from Spain. Sinner is 21 from Italy. Uh, Francis Tiafo uh, from the United States is in the semifinals. He's 24. Um, we have such an exciting time in tennis because it's no longer going to be dominated by the old timers. So I'm very much looking forward to it. And with that in mind, I picked a few videos for you to look at. Okay, next one. Uh, well, I don't know the boy, but um, he was in my ear the entire match, basically, especially when I was two sets to love down. He was encouraging me. He was, he was actually giving me tactics as well. He was like, hold your serve, get an easy first ball, and then dictate, uh, go to his backhand. Like, he was coaching me, literally. Uh, and, and so I, thought, I found that very, very cute and very nice. And uh, um, so, you know, I, I felt like it was uh, the, 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 it, it, 
you know, to give the racket to, to, to the best, best person was him uh, after the match. So that was kind of my gratitude for him sticking with me and supporting me. All right, watch closely on this one. <laughs> Showing off three goals. <laughs> You've been right for like that one. <laughs> oh, that is amazing. On his backside, but no problem for Grigor Dimitrov. Oh, yes! That is a ripper, and he knows it. Wants a, a bit of passing. <laughs> Normally, we see the squash shot on the forehand. A lot of players. Oh, well, that is very special. Okay, last one. Okay, Taya, uh, let's stop this. Good. Okay, um, even though I played tennis from my adolescence, I don't think I've ever hit one of those uh, return shots. And I'm not anticipating that I ever will. And uh, for those of us who think uh, Novak doesn't have another side to him, these videos surprised me, so I thought I'd share them with you. Okay. These are some more quotes from Rodney Dangerfield. I could, um, my mother never breast me. She breastfed me. She told me that she only liked me as a friend. My father carries around the picture of the kid who came with his wallet. My mother had morning sickness after I was born. Once when I was lost, I saw a policeman and asked him to help me find my parents. I said to him, do you think we'll ever find them? He said, I don't know, kid. There are so many places they can hide. 
And finally, my psychiatrist told me I'm going crazy. I told him, if you don't mind, I'd like a second opinion. He said, all right, you're ugly too. With that, Diane, will you introduce our speaker of the day? I certainly will, President Chris, thank you. We're very fortunate today to have the very first president for the new cause-based Rotary Club entitled Rotarians in Service to Equality, or known as RIDE. Uh, Scott Burris, Dr. Scott Burris, is the new uh, president, and we welcome you. Um, Scott has a varied background in applied psychology, including spending time as a substance use counselor, personal development coach, higher education leader, so, and social policy researcher. He has experience in various leadership roles, um, and most recently as a provost and chief academic officer. He has worked with over 20 publicly and privately funded research studies or on, I'm sorry, on research studies and managed millions of dollars in grant funding that resulted in over 50 publications and conference presentations. Scott is the owner and lead coach at Empower Wellness LA, a California-based health and wellness consulting company that aims to facilitate the transition from chaos to miraculousness in all areas of life. Scott, we thank you for being here and we welcome you. Thank you. I appreciate the introduction and thank you for taking the time to have me be here. Um, I thought I would start off by um, doing the, the form introduction and then following that, talk a little bit about RISE and its mission and sort of where we're headed and opportunities for engagement and then open it up to any questions. So to start off, um, I live here in uh, Reseda with my partner, John Mina. And my daughter is a freshman at San Francisco State. Um, most of my immediate family, though, lives in Portland, Oregon, or um, in San Diego. I recently moved up to LA County a few months ago after living in San Diego for eight months. So um, as Diane said, um, my background is in applied psychology, and I've been working in higher ed for um, over 25 years now. Um, with the last uh, 15 or so in various leadership roles, including chief academic officer, overseeing various colleges within the institution. What I like to do for fun or recreation is I like movies, uh, binging interesting new shows, um, discovering new restaurants, and travel are the things I enjoy most, um, as well as, you know, other entertainment venues, going to plays, musicals, concerts, etc. cetera. Um, my motivation is multi-dimensional. Um, I myself did not come out until later in life, and but always kind of knowing that this was who I am and my story, um, but I'm, I'm 52 and became an adolescent in the 80s, um, which as you likely remember was when AIDS was kind of coming up to be um, something that was, you know, uh, epidemic in this country and around the world. And it just was not the time for me to kind of live into my fullness. Um, I was raised in a very conservative household and there just was a lot of messages that this was not the path I was supposed to take at that time. But um, I was, you know, finally able to really get the courage to move forward and have built a, a great life for myself, frankly. I, um, I have, there's nothing in my life I would change, honestly. Everything for me is great. And, and a lot of that's because of the work I've put into it, frankly. Um, but after coming out and kind of having increased awareness of the ongoing disparities that exist, for the LGBTQIA community in particular, and especially for youth. Um, I just, I've been doing everything that I personally and professionally can to advocate for equality across groups, but in particular for this group. Uh, you may or may not know that um, gay men are four times more likely to suffer depression 
and three times more likely to commit suicide than the general population. Um, LGBTQIA plus youth um, across the spectrum um, tend to represent about 7% of the youth population nationwide, but they represent 40% of youth homeless, in large part because these youth you know, continue to have to deal with being disowned by their family, kicked out of their home, and being put on the streets. And so RISE um, came about during uh, Pastor District Governor um, Giddy Javid's uh, time in her position um, as part of a suite of um, e-based, cause-based clubs um, that includes mental health and wellness, uh, human trafficking, as well as environment, and then RISE came um, on the heels of those. <clears throat> I'm gonna share with you now in the chat, as well as read, uh, this is RISE's mission statement. RISE exists to promote integrity, advanced world understanding, goodwill and peace, while fostering acceptance, inclusion, and diversity by providing services, opportunities, and educations to our members, the LGBTQIA plus community and the global community at large. We're in a unique situation, not just by being cause-based, but also kind of being a hybrid and sort of e-club in that we have members from Mexico, Southern California, San Diego and Los Angeles, Colorado, Arizona, Texas and Florida. Um, we chartered with about 25 members and we've been growing. Um, and really where the membership wants to focus itself this year is on partnering with other Rotary clubs, bringing visibility to the issues that we're grappling with as a community, um, as, but primarily to focus on the aforementioned issues that you tend to face, in particular homeless youth, um, and specifically here in LA County. About 60% of our membership is LA County with the remainder, um, again, in the locations that I mentioned. So we're currently, um, looking at partnering with Safe Place for Youth, which has, I think, a long history with Rotary, um, but their goal and their missions are deeply aligned with the RISE mission statement that I just uh, read off. Um, and in large part, we see them as a very natural synergistic partner for us to become immediately engaged in the issues facing our community. Um, so what we're applying for our first um, district grant and just kind of really trying to move forward in doing things such as a deal with food insecurity issues, housing insecurity, sorry, I apologize, um, as well as, you know, mentorship, giving um, youth the opportunity to find work, find stability. Um, we're going to be participating in the youth authorization training here shortly. Um, and so that we're well prepared to work with the organization um, across you know, the board as far as working with the leaders and the staff, as well as the, as the um, people that they serve. So I will also share with you um, our email address and our Facebook group, which you guys are invited to join. Um, and so that's you know, where we have a chance to talk about various initiatives that we're bringing forward, um, et cetera. Also, our regular membership meeting is on the second and fourth Tuesday of the month at six o'clock, and it is via Zoom. So if there's ever an opportunity you would like to attend, please reach out to Diane or myself, and we will get you the meeting link uh, for that. So with that, um, I guess, what I want to kind of conclude with is that we are very encouraged to frankly find a safe place in Rotary. Um, for myself, I was ignorant in that I was, I didn't even know that Rotary still existed when I met my partner who's deeply involved with Rotary and has a long history as well as with his family. Um, but then kind of discovering what Rotary is and what it's doing and what it's about combined with the aforementioned issues, it just seemed like a natural fit and an opportunity for people that aren't always plugged in to have a venue to give back in a way that is edifying for them. But also having this particular cause-based club um, 
there still are often many barriers for gay people in terms of a variety of venues. Um, if it's religious, non-religious, professional, um, academic, even in many cases, um, that there is a place that is welcoming and affirming, accepting, and in fact, encouraging our voice to be heard. So again, I thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here today. Any questions for me? Yes, Diane. So Scott, do you have any ideas at the moment as to how our club can partner with RISE or, or is there anything in particular we can help yeah. RISE with? I thank you for that uh, question. Um, we were somewhat fortunate in that um, when we chartered, uh, shortly thereafter, we were able to obtain dues from all of our members or they right, either were, we obtained them from them directly or they were sponsored. So we are 100% on obtaining our dues, which has allowed us to you know, begin to form the club and do some things that we need to do. But that being said, our dues are very low intentionally to start because the age range um, of our group, it, it, it goes from people that recently graduated high school or college to people, you know, um, even in their 80s and everything in between. So I mentioned that because, you know, I think we're still trying to get our grounding and get our a better understanding of how to do fundraising, especially in an electronic environment, as well as also, you know, uh, recruit volunteers to do the various service projects we plan to do with Safe Place for Youth in particular. And those things are gonna look like, um, they provide meals to hundreds, if not thousands of youth on a daily basis. And the approximate cost of those is $550. And so you can find your own person to come and you know, that you have a caterer you love that would be great at this, or they use their own person. Um, they have, again, a clothing closet that they have so that youth have wearable professional clothing for job interviews. They sponsor host homes where the youth are living temporarily while they get stable. Um, you know, there's a variety of mentorship um, and then also things that occur during the holidays, which can be a very difficult time for this population, as you can imagine, um, not having that connection and, and being rejected uh, by their family. So to answer your question directly, I think it's, it's pretty much anything that anyone would like to contribute is welcome, including if it's writing a check or if it's um, participating in the uh, volunteer events that we're going to be holding. The, lo the location of the organization is in Venice, um, not surprisingly. And so that's where, you know, a variety of things will occur that we'll be announcing on our Facebook page and in the district newsletter and things like that. So I guess I would ask just to attend <clears throat> those announcements that are in the district newsletter. And um, I think that would be just the more support we can get, the better, because honestly, we are trying to get our feet wet. And we're a club that 100% of us, this is our first experience with Rotary. And so we're going to be going through a variety of trainings, Rotary 101, becoming a Rotarian. So any way that people can provide us with support and mentorship is welcomed. Any other questions? I was, what would you say was the most difficult part of, of your, your growing up? Well, the most difficult part was um, feeling a sense of um, not being okay, not being acceptable, not being normal, um, that, you know, I was going to hell. Frankly, that was sort of the messaging that I received, that who I was was simply not okay and not worth existing. And so it took a lot for me to overcome that. And thankfully now I'm in a place of, of, of I feel healed as, and I have a great relationship with my parents. Um, most of my extended family has not communicated with me since I came out about five years ago. Um, I have about, I wanna say um, nine aunts and uncles. My mom came from a large family as well as my dad from a moderately large family. And right now there's two, maybe three of those that have communicated uh, with me in that time. So it's something I, I, I've accepted um, because I know who I am 
now and how I live in my fullness and joy. And, um, and that makes me just, uh, that makes me a better father to my daughter, makes me a better son to my parents, makes me a better partner, brother, friend, cousin, et cetera. Um, so it was, yeah, it was, it was very interesting growing up in the eighties during that time in a, um, in the environment where I was basically told that I really didn't, I shouldn't exist. And so again, I think, you know, I think we've come a long way as a community, certainly you have marriage equality and things like that, but many of those issues I think are tenuous. Um, in many cases, there still isn't equality when it comes to jobs. <clears throat> States are allowed to um, use sexual orientation as a reason not to hire someone in many states, even still. Um, and so, and then I mentioned like the health and mental health disparities. People often are aware of those as it exists. You know, people of poverty, people of color, and obviously those issues are real. And I won't take anything away from that. But I think many people are surprised to learn about the disparities that continue to exist in the gay community. Thanks, Thanks for the question. So Scott, how did Giddy convince you to be the president of this organization? <laughs> so it was sort of a synergistic thing that occurred, right? I could kind of observe what John was doing with historic Filipino town. And um, I was sort of, I, I caught the vision fairly early from her when she was just starting to have informational meetings at the very beginning. And given my background um, and my story, I just sort of felt like these things are coming together. And so I think a combination of Giddy sharing her vision and my being at a place with my daughter being in college, essentially an empty nester and living up here in LA now, it just sort of seemed like the stars were aligned for me to give back in this way. Well, we're glad you accepted and we look forward to working with the club. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, I will head out. Yes. Scott, I've got several gay friends and we have this debate all the time. When you are confronted with stark homophobia, okay, do you, which avenue do you take? Do you take the let's address that right on or let's avoid an altercation and uh, ignore it and move on? Which, which route do you take? I've had this debate yeah, with my friends. Question. So hopefully, perhaps you can maybe see, I think one thing that Zoom can provide, although face-to-face -face is often better, is a person's affect, how they carry themselves, how they talk. And generally speaking, I found that in the work that I, I do, where I'm constantly having to have people come together and resolve conflict, that I tend to just be very measured. I can hear what's happening, but if I do think that something is unjust, I will speak up, but I'll speak up in a way that is kind, respectful, but still you know, firm and direct. And so I think there's a way to advocate that doesn't alienate. But I do think that advocacy remains something that's important. You're a nicer person than I am. Very good for you, good for you. Thanks. Could you elaborate on that, Mark? Well, my attitude with these three guys, and we've been out to dinner discussing this, is that all three of them take a different approach, a more constructive approach, as Scott is expressing, and that is that altercation does nothing but in, enforce their homophobia. My attitude is, is they need to know it's not acceptable behavior, and they will be confronted, they will be screamed at and yelled at, any time they exhibit this unacceptable behavior. But I'm in the minority and I'm the straight guy. Um, and I can't get my friends to come around to my way of thinking, but okay. Well, I think here's the thing. It's different to be an ally as it is to be identifying um, in the community. I think allies have greater latitude, frankly, in many cases to be the advocate and say exactly what you said in the way that you said it. Um, in the same way, you know, I've been in situations where my, my daughter's adopted and she is biracial. And frankly, it's been 
easier, I guess, in some ways for me as a white guy, you know, I'm not, I'm fairly privileged, maybe not in always, but in many ways um, to advocate for her. Although she needs to advocate for herself too. And I do advocate for myself as well. But I think sometimes my voice is differently heard by those that need to hear it. And that's why allies are so important. And we do have a number of allies in our club too that have seen what you've, what you've uh, discussed and are committed to equality that we advocate for. How big is the club? It's about 25 right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm, I'm curious, um, why do you, or in your experience, why do some people come out um, aggressively against? Is there some wisdom that you can share with well, us? Well, yeah, my perspective is it tends to be based in fear. When other people get things that they need, some people can be afraid that they're going to lose something in the process. And so I, I, my experience has been those reactions are based out of fear and ignorance. And how do you respond to it? By speaking truth into the situation, kind of in the way that I've said is, I have no problem being direct, um, but I want to do it in a way that people will hear, knowing that they likely may not hear it, or it may take several times over several years for them to hear it, and accepting the person at where they're at, and again, hoping for some change, but um, I think that that's sort of the approach that I tend to take. Okay. Any other thoughts, questions, comments? Well, I appreciate you all very much. Again, you have my contact information. Feel free to join our Facebook group um, to stay abreast of things. And I will see you all at future district events. Please feel free to reach out to me and search me out at those because I find to be as many as possible. Yes. Uh, Scott, I'm sorry to ask the question as you're oh, yeah, checking okay. out, uh, checking off, but when do, you, when do you meet? Maybe you already mentioned it. I, uh, every um, second and fourth Tuesday at 6 p.m. via Zoom. And our meeting time is usually also posted on the Facebook page as well. Okay, thank you. Yep. Thanks a lot. All right, thank you, Scott. Appreciate uh, you all. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. Ciao. Bye. All right. Before we go, um, next week, um, Ben Fisher will be running the meeting, and I will be at Bill Goodwin's funeral. I'll convey the club's. Uh, wish sadness to Judy, who I've known forever, and um, remind her of all the good things and all the good memories I have of Bill. The meeting is going to be at the Delphi Greek next um. Thursday. Please mark your calendar. That's important. And uh, Ruth Bay is going to prepare a special menu for Rotary. Uh, Chris? Yes. Is, is it Delphi Greek or is it the new, yeah. new restaurant? No, it's going to be the Delphi Greek. Chris? Yes. Terry, are we sending flowers or a donation or anything on behalf of the bill? Uh, as of this moment, I'm not aware. But you and I can talk about that. As a board member, I vote in favor of us doing something. And I think probably others might as well. Yeah. So if you get quorum, I think, to, or just move forward on it. That's fine. Yeah. Just so I met Bill in 1984. I don't know where these years go. You were a little baby. <laughs> Uh, ben, anything else you want to talk about uh, for the meeting next week? Well, next week, uh, I've just been in touch with Ruth Bay during the call. Uh, I think we're not going to need Tia. We're going to do a conventional old-fashioned meeting without uh, the computer. So I'll be reaching out to two people, one to say the pledge and one for a thought of the day. Tia, yeah, you do not need to present anything. I'll try to come up with a joke of the day. And Ruse Bay uh, and I spoke, he's doing his uh, senior craft talk, but he's gonna do it slowly and he's going to announce his words. 
Okay. Just so you know, I told him if he wants to rehearse it with me, he will. But I said, people really want to understand and feel you. Mark, I heard you, I heard you loud and clear. I'm with you. I didn't, wasn't critical. I said, your English is better than my Farsi. So he, he understood exactly. Okay. Wish so, you Benjamin, I need to be on the agenda to make a presentation. Okay. So uh, on Monday at our board meeting, uh, we'll go over, I'll give you the outline and you can show me where you want to be. Okay. okay. Diane, I know you've already said something, but I need to know how many people are going to be there at the board meeting on Monday night. Um, I'll be there. I'll Steve be Day. There. Steve Day will be there. So will I. Five, six, I'll be there. seven, eight, at least eight. But let me go back and see who's RSVP. Is, is Aaron, do you know if Aaron RSVP? Yes, Aaron RSVP. Yes. I have not heard from Nevin or Marsha, but they usually are traveling. Right. Tom, thank you for volunteering your house again. Yeah. Thank you. Just remember, I need budgets. If they want to get approved, we need to have budgets. Well, that's you and Aaron. <laughs> Well, I'm, mine's done, but Nevin and Marcia need to submit theirs as well. Right. Let's. Okay. That's right. All right. All right. Uh, Mike. Mike. Well, this, it's an aside. I was just watching the Salvation Army play the other night as a makeup, and Steve Day mentioned trying to get a hold of Mark Block. And a lot of you knew Mark. He's actually. To the best of my knowledge, talked to him a couple months ago. He's in Tennessee. They left Manhattan Beach, and um, oh. he's teaching and he's practicing law there. Well, he, they moved away from Tennis uh, from Los Angeles. Yeah, oh, wow. He's, wow. He's in Tennessee, or if I'm mistaken, maybe it's one of the Carolinas. But I think he was, if we all remember his football history and stuff, uh, University of Tennessee and volunteers and what have you. I think oh, his wow. family is from Tennessee also. Pardon? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. How is you have a... Mark, Mike, how is his wife? Um, I think about the same. You know, it's always been a struggle and they're doing as well as they can. And the kids, Mike, do you have any contact information? Um, I'd have to search for it, but I'll look. Okay. Thank you. And the, bo and the boys are all, you know, through school and what have you. Yeah, go ahead, Mark. Ben, don't forget. Um... <clears throat> guests and uh, visiting returns. I have, I'll have a prospective member joining us uh, next Thursday. So Mark, if you'll give me that information on Monday, so I'm prepared. Uh, uh, I won't be there on Monday. I'll be uh, on a flight up to San Francisco Monday during the board meeting. Okay, so you'll send me that info so I can yeah. make them warm and uh, warm and welcome there? No problem. Uh, so that uh, Mike, or should, excuse me, Ben and Chris, I am yep. going to schedule that um, impact uh, session for 11 o'clock on Tuesday morning. Hopefully. That's fine. Okay, Ben, does that work for you? Uh, trying to hold on. The answer is yes. I just remembered. Yes, it does. Okay, great. That means, uh, and Mark, you said you might try to get on it on Tuesday morning. Mark, Mark Rogo. What what uh, on these? I sent you an invite for the Impact Club. Uh, oh yeah, to talk. I, I can't, Steve. I'll be out of town Monday. But Tuesday, it's, Wednesday. A, it's a Zoom though, Mark. You can zoom no. in on it, or you can web. It's a it's a webinar type thing, so you can just do it on computer. Yeah, I, but I think actually I'm taking my mother okay. to the Millbrae Rotary Club meeting Tuesday at that time. Okay, whatever. If you can't make it, that's that. Um, but I do want you involved because you're so, you know. You are the membership chair, and this is late to, related to adding members as well as um, your just involvement in the community is just so deep. Right. And you'll send us a Zoom uh, invite. Well, actually, it, 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 yes, I will. I'll go ahead and log in those times and figure out how to get the uh, what, invite. What around. time? I think it's at eleven o'clock in the morning. So, I, uh, we can how about ten o'clock? I, I do have the flexibility to go to ten. If you, I did it at ten, could you participate? I could uh, don't worry, don't do it just for my sake, but I am taking my mother to the Millbrae Rotary Club for their lunch meeting on Tuesday. 
But if we did it between 10 and 11, it might work for you. Yeah, I could, I could do that. Yeah. Nancy, did you say 11 to one or 10 to one? Nancy Cohen. Could you, would 10 o'clock work for you? He's, oh, muted. he's muted. I don't see her. Well, I'm going to go with, yeah, I'm going to go with 10 then I, because I really would like your participation, Mark. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anyone else on this call that is interested? I'm, I, I realize it's kind of cold. You don't really necessarily know exactly what I'm talking about, but if you want to participate in the establishment of this new impact club, we're having a very important zoom call with, with Patrick, Mangano, who's in North Carolina, who is instrumental in starting it. And we'd love to get everyone's involvement uh, in, in getting this thing to be an, a successful impact club. So if you want, be happy to invite any of you to that session as well. Right now, it's going to be Diane and me and Chris and Nancy and Mark. I invited, um, and who else did I, I think I might have missed somebody. If I did, I apologize. Oh, you, invited, uh, you invited me. Pardon me? You invited me as well. Yes, there it is. I know I forgot somebody. And and I'd love to involve as many people as, as uh, interested. So let me know. You don't have to do it right now. But thank you. Okay. I think the bell is about to ring. Sounds great. That bell was not, I couldn't hear the bell. <laughs> is you, are you pretending to ring the bell? No, I'm ringing it. <laughs> Nobody commented on my shirt. I'm going to the Rams game later. I don't, I don't think good for you. No, nobody commented on my shirt either. And, and by the way, no. Is that mustard? Is that mustard? <laughs> Rotary. <laughs> nobody would be going to class, Chris, with that bell. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, thank you all. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Okay. Got Bye -bye. it.